My name is Scott Chapman, and this is my story. Believe it or not, my story with God starts right here in the Medical College of Ohio. For most of my adult life, I was studying to be a doctor. I thought that's what I was going to orient my entire life around. And the day that I got accepted here, I knew that my life was going to change. But I had no idea how. This was the place where God became real. This was the place where He entered my life, and He turned it upside down, and He transformed it into something new. If you'd have known me back then, you'd have said, man, my life was on the rise. And you'd have been right. My career was up and to the right. I had tons of friends. I never missed a party. But the craziest thing about that, the more that I would achieve, the more parties that I would go to, the more pleasure that I would try to pack into my life, the more empty I would feel. See, the crazy thing was, the more that I would seem to bring into my life, the question I couldn't get out of my head was there has to be more than this. There was that emptiness that was just growing inside me. And the more that it grew, frankly, the darker it became. And there was a night in my apartment where I sat alone and I really contemplated ending it. Not just ending medical school or ending uh, this portion of my life, but ending my life. I remember that night really well. I was alone and I was in my apartment. And honestly, I was convincing myself to keep going. I was trying to think of any reason that I could go on living. And in the midst of that, I happened to see across the room a Bible. Now at that point in time, I had never read the Bible. I had no idea even really what it said. But somehow I was just drawn to it. And I went over and I grabbed it. And I looked at it and I thought, where do you start? So I did what I would do with any book. And I flipped to the table of contents and I went down the list. And I looked at all these names of books that I had never heard of. And I landed on this book called Romans and began to read the gospel from the Apostle Paul. It was the first time I'd heard it. And what really blew me away was the idea that there was a God who loved people so much, even people who had messed up, who had blown it, who had gotten it wrong, who were horribly broken inside like me, who had no idea how to even move forward in life. And he loved them so much that he came and he died for them. And he rose from the dead that they may have life. And he said that that could be mine and I could be forgiven. You have to understand I'd never heard that. My entire understanding up to this point had been that you have to do more good things than bad things to go to heaven. You kind of have to square the scales of justice somehow, cosmically. And candidly, I had done so many bad things up to that point in time. I thought I could spend the rest of my life doing good things and I could never catch up. This was a game changer. This was a moment when I had real hope. You know, as God started to become real to me, I had a lot of questions, and frankly, I didn't know the answer to. Questions like, where are we from, and how did we get here, and who is God, and how would you know? Is the Bible actually true, and why do bad things happen to good people? And so I wrote them all down on a piece of paper, and the person I thought that I would take it to was my buddy Dave, because he was a pastor, and pastors know everything, right? So what we would do every Friday night, we'd play racquetball and come here, Tony Paco's, which is a great restaurant in downtown Toledo. We'd get some great things to eat and drink, and we talk about God. And I would bring all my questions out to Dave. Now, I'd love to tell you Dave knew all the answers, but in reality, he didn't. But what Dave did was listen to me and love me really well. And somewhere along the way, the questions became maybe a little less significant, and the heart of God began to be what I saw grow in me because of Dave. Can I tell you, these times here at this table in this place were life-changing for me. You know, as life went on for me, I started to get up early in the morning and encounter God. And I started to pray and I started to read the Bible. And God became very real to me. And I started to go to church, which is honestly something I didn't think I would ever do. And in fact, in this little church, one Sunday morning, I made a momentous decision. At the very end of the service, when my friend Dave ended his message, he would always invite people 
to receive Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Honestly, nobody ever did. But this Sunday, I did. I remember what that was like. I remember what it was like to get up from that chair and to walk forward and to stand in front of all those people and say, yeah, my life isn't right. It's a mess. It looks great on the outside, but it is terribly broken on the inside. And I need Jesus. And I want to follow him for the rest of my life. You know, as the months went on, God really started to change my life. And one of the things he did was help me to understand what Christian community looked like. Right back here, a few friends and I started a Bible study while we were in medical school. We didn't have grand dreams or even imagine God would do that much with it. But man, were we wrong. We opened up our Bibles and we read the book of Acts and we asked this question, what would happen if we would live this out just as they did? I mean, would God do in us what he did in them? And would we see God do the things here that he did there? And we did. You know what was amazing? 44 people came to Christ over a couple years from that little Bible study right here in the midst of school. We saw God change people's lives. We saw God turn things upside down. We saw Him bless people in ways that I couldn't imagine. You know, after I gave my life to God, He became a bigger and bigger part of almost everything. And I love spending time with Him. And one of the places I love to do it was right here in a forest near where I lived. I would come here in the mornings and I would run and I would pray and I would stop and I would think. I would think about God, I would think about life, I would think about everything. And one day as I was running, I turned aside and I came to almost this very spot and there was a tree, much like this one, that had fallen over a stream. And when I got here, I just felt the undeniable presence of God. And as I lingered and I paused, honestly, the presence of God was so thick, it felt heavy and I almost felt it pushing me to the ground. And as I stopped, and as I sat, and as I spent time with God, I heard His voice in my mind in a very, very clear way, calling me out of medicine and into ministry. And so after talking to Tammy and talking to some other folks, I made a really incredible decision. I kind of decided that I knew that I would chicken out once I started in ministry. And I knew I'd want to come back to medicine because it would get hard. And so I went into my final exams in medical school that year, and I signed my name and turned them in blank. So that I flunked out and could never come back. That the only way forward for me was following God. And right after that, with my brand new bride, I moved to this place called Chicago. And a couple years later, planted this crazy church called The Chapel.